Hey there, welcome back to See What We Can See. I'm John. Nature has its fair share of tricksters, and today we're exploring one that's as captivating as it is deceptive. Meet the Carolina horse nettle, also known as the devil's tomato, a plant with a dangerous reputation and a fascinating story to tell. The Carolina horse nettle is a perennial plant native to North America, thriving in fields, pastures, and roadsides. It belongs to the nightshade family, the same group that includes tomatoes and potatoes. But unlike its tasty cousins, the devil's tomato comes with a warning label. The plant stands out with its lobed leaves, often covered in fine, sharp spines. Its delicate flowers are star-shaped, typically pale violet or white, with a cluster of bright yellow stamens in the center. Later in the season, the plant produces small, round berries that turn yellow as they ripen, tempting but highly toxic. While the berries may look like miniature tomatoes, they are not safe to eat. In fact, all parts of the Carolina horse nettle are poisonous to humans and animals, containing compounds which can cause serious health issues if ingested. The toxicity of the devil's tomato comes from its production of solanine, a chemical common in many nightshades. Ingesting even small amounts can lead to symptoms like nausea, vomiting, stomach pain, and dizziness. Larger doses can cause respiratory distress, paralysis, or even death. For livestock, especially cows and horses, the plant is equally dangerous. The berries and leaves can poison animals if consumed in large quantities, leading to symptoms like colic, difficulty breathing, and nervous system issues. Even handling the plant can be risky. The spines can puncture the skin, and while the toxin doesn't absorb through touch, it's always a good idea to wear gloves when removing or working near this plant. Because of its toxicity, the devil's tomato is classified as a noxious weed in many areas, and its presence in pastures or gardens should be carefully managed to avoid accidental poisoning. Why is it called the devil's tomato? The name likely comes from its thorny, unwelcoming stems and its misleading resemblance to edible tomatoes. It has been nicknamed bull nettle and tread softly, hinting at its painful spines and toxic nature. No matter what you call it, this plant isn't one to mess with. Despite its dangers, the devil's tomato plays an important role in our ecosystem. Its flowers attract a wide variety of pollinators, including bees and butterflies, who visit for nectar without being harmed by the plant's toxins. Interestingly, some animals, like wild turkeys and songbirds, can safely consume the berries. These animals help disperse the seeds, ensuring the plant's survival in its preferred open, sunny habitats. The Carolina horse nettle has long been a part of folklore and medicine. Early settlers and indigenous people sometimes used it in small amounts for its medicinal properties, though its toxicity made it a risky remedy. Today, it serves as a reminder of how powerful and unpredictable nature can be. Farmers, on the other hand, consider it a nuisance. Its hardy nature and aggressive growth make it difficult to control in pastures where it can pose a risk to grazing livestock. The devil's tomato might not be as devilish as its name suggests, but it's certainly a plant to respect. Its thorny defenses, toxic berries, and ecological role remind us that the beauty in nature often comes with a hidden edge. So next time you're wandering through an overgrown field, take a moment to appreciate the fascinating world of the Carolina horse nettle. But be sure to admire it from a safe distance. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. But either way, get out there and see what you can see.